For the last three years, the United Church of Christ and a coalition of advocates have been working to lower predatory prison phone rates. In 2013, the coalition successfully persuaded the federal government to lower long-distance phone rates. The current campaign effort is to lower local rates as well. These videos tell the story of inmates and their families and explain the causes of these terrible rates. My son is in prison. He has five phone numbers that he can call. Those are the only family members who have maintained their jobs through the financial crisis and can accept his calls without worrying about the cost of those each month. Just this month, my bill was like $138. Even at one phone call a week, it cost me 40 to $50 every month. Lowering the prices of prison calls will also make for better inmates. When they have that communication outside, it shows in the inmates' actions. I am living on a fixed income of SSI, so this is really a great hardship. Families are being punished. When they incarcerate their children, they incarcerate the whole family. They're just taking advantage of people that are already in financially bad situations and exasperating and breaking up families and preventing reentry and rehabilitation and family reunification. My hero's not yours, you probably arrested them. Your school's probably neglected them. They small thoughts, you probably infected For most of us, making and receiving a phone call is a simple and affordable process. But for the two million families of prisoners, the cost of receiving a phone call from most prisons in the U.S. is outrageously expensive. I try to accept calls from my brother. If I put $40 on the phone, that was two phone calls. Telephone companies like Global Tel Link and Securus pay prisons a percentage of their income in exchange for being the only provider at that facility. These payments, known as commissions, can be as high as 62%, and the additional cost is passed on to families in the form of higher phone rates, surcharges, and fees. Studies show that prisoners who maintain strong connections with their families are less likely to recommit a crime after they're released. Regular contact has also proven beneficial for the children of incarcerated parents by improving their self-esteem and leading to fewer behavioral problems. Unfortunately, over 50% of prisoners are incarcerated at least 100 miles from their families, making regular visits difficult. Phone calls and letters become the primary way these relationships are maintained. Hey, Uncle Mike, I love you. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and this is Crystal. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Love you. I love you. Love you, Uncle Mike. I love you. My name is C.J. Smith. I'm ta calling to give a message to Andre Pearson. He's at Atwater, and I'm his aunt. And Teddy Bear, I just want to let you know in this time of the year that I love you, and I miss you, and I wish I could see you. I like to say, Daddy, love we you. love you, Daddy, and... Crystal says she loves you too. Merry Christmas. And hope you get home soon. Long distance phone calls from one state to another are the most lucrative calls in the prison telephone industry. These calls help pay for the more than $100 million in commissions that states receive every year. Eight states have passed legislation to ban these commissions, leading to more affordable phone rates, while attempts to address this issue at the federal level have not been as successful. Martha Wright is a namesake of the Wright Petition, and she is a grandmother who lives outside of Washington, D.C., who first dealt with this issue when her grandson was sent off to prison. She started receiving these monthly phone bills, which was just exorbitantly high, and she eventually opted to, to sue these companies because they were charging way too much for these phone calls. And for 10 years, Mrs. Martha Wright's plea for change sat idle until in 2011, a renewed effort called the Campaign for Prison Phone Justice began calling on the FCC to address the cost of interstate phone calls. 
The campaign for prison phone justice uh, has been an effort that's been going on for the last two years. A group of media justice activists came together with a group of criminal justice activists and decided that it was time to take another run at getting the right petition passed by the FCC. Following a call to action by the campaign, hundreds of letters written by prisoners poured into the FCC. Advocates and families all over the country filled out postcards, met with elected officials, and signed petitions. Partnerships developed with new and diverse voices from across the political spectrum and in unlikely places. The film distribution company, Participant Media, and director Ava DuVernay joined the fight through a social action campaign tied to the release of the feature film, Middle of Nowhere. The film chronicles the story of Ruby and her struggles with her husband's incarceration. The Campaign for Prison Phone Justice hosted a screening of the film at the Federal Communications Commission, which was followed by testimony delivered by Mrs. Martha Wright. After 10 years of waiting on the FCC to act, this moment marked the first time Mrs. Wright had shared her story with the commission. It has been a little bit over two months since I've seen my son. Two months since I've heard my son's voice. I write my son every week. I write to him because I'm unable to call him. I need him as much as he needs me. Why should I feel In an effort to push the FCC to act, the campaign hosted a historic rally outside of the Federal Communications Commission where for the first time, families of prisoners, elected officials, civil rights and faith leaders came together to call for an end to predatory phone rates. When I say safe, you say community is safe. Community. Safe. Community. We're all held captive when predatory phone companies gouge our families. My son has been incarcerated now for over 10 years, and my husband estimates that in the time we spent over $25,000 on prison phone calls. We ask you, dear God, for an end to the practices of huge corporations that provide communication to the citizenry of this nation, but prevent families of the incarcerated from speaking to their loved ones because of excessive costs of telephone calls. As somebody who was formerly incarcerated, my mother paid anywhere from $9 for a 15-minute call to $38 for a 15-minute call. If we are to be a society that truly believes in fiscal responsibility, as well as a moral responsibility, we must end the predatory practice of gouging families with outrageous telephone rates. Thanks to the work portrayed in this video, in August 2013, the FCC voted to approve prison phone rate reform. In February 2014, the rates took effect and long distance rates came down. But that success did not address local rates and local rates are still unregulated. To make matters worse, some prisons are eliminating in-person visits altogether and replacing them with so-called video visitation, also offered at sky high rates. In fact, companies that offer prison video visitation for a fee encourage prisons to eliminate in-person visits as a way to drive up profits. We need your help. Many correctional institutions are fighting further reforms. FCC needs to hear from everyone, particularly the faith community. Please visit uccmediajustice.org slash prison phones to learn more. Think your phone company charges too much? Try Global Tellink, the biggest phone company for prisoners and their families. 
Global Tellink makes more than 500 million a year, charging sky high rates to the very people who are least able to pay. My name is Kenny. I'm nine. Here's me, here's my mom, and here's my dad. He's tall and he's funny. Mm. He is in jail. And do you get to visit him a lot? Mm, no. My son's father is in Hardiman County, CCA. We can't make the commute as often to see his dad because the commute is like almost a four hour drive. Phone calls are a problem because they cost too much and uh, I have other bills. I'm a single parent. The service provider we use is Global Telling. What they do is they enter into contracts with the state prisons, county jails, detention centers, and prisoners and their families have no choice but to make calls through Global Telling. I want to put this in a little perspective here. A call via private company Global Telling costs a dollar and 13 cents a minute. That's about 17 bucks for a 15 minute phone call. $17 just to hear a loved one's voice, while everyone else can talk to people across the globe for next to nothing. How does Global Telling get away with it? By rigging the system. It gets contracts by offering kickbacks to the prisons. The bigger the kickback, called a commission, the more likely the prison is to give the contract to Global Telling. The cost gets passed on to families through high prices. Would you talk to him if you could? Um, every week. Because we never get to spend any time together. The more contact that prisoners have with people on the outside, you know, support networks like family and friends, the more likely they are to succeed both in prison and when they get out. In 2013, the FCC announced it would cap prison phone rates, but that just affects calls from state to state. Most prisoners' family members, like Latanya and Kenny, make their calls within a state. Without more action, their rates will stay high. If I could talk to my dad right now, I'd say I miss him. Fight the prison profiteers. Tell the FCC to cap all prison phone rates at prisonprofiteers.org. Click here.